a new governor. So someone's in here today. A lot of my friends have been saying, Anomaly, you got to talk to this guy. Anomaly, you got to talk to this guy. So he's very popular on the on the outskirts, okay? Uh, so I'm bringing him in. His name is Anthony Tremino. I don't know much. I'm, I'm about to find out. So I'm going to conduct a little interview conversation. Be on in a few seconds. Thank you guys for the badges. Someone said, marry me, maybe after the stream. Just kidding. Hey. Hey. How are you? Good. How are you? Life is good. So I've been hearing a lot about you. The, the, the block's hot, as they say. The word on the street. Everyone said, <laughs> you got to interview this guy. And it wasn't just you got to interview him. It seems like some people that I know that are very involved in politics and very authentic people are very into you and very into your campaign. So congrats on the grassroots effort. And I'm Thank looking you. forward to it. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Yeah, I got a, I got a call right now and said, hey, I need you to get on and I need you to talk. And I was like, yeah, I, I heard a lot about you as well. So happy to be chatting with you. I mean, Thanks for I'm coming. Actually, yeah, I'm actually in my car in a parking lot right now. So excuse the fact that I'm not in a more stable place. But Oh, no, I appreciate we'll it. I'm, thank you, too, because I'm bad with scheduling and I'm kind of random. It's a pro and a con. Uh, but I was like, you know, I was talking to my buddy, uh, Jesse. And I, he, yeah. I was like, he, I was like, I'm gonna be live in two minutes. If he can get here in two minutes, I'll talk to him. So that's what it is. Yeah. So I guess in like a minute or so, just let me know, you know, this is gonna be a generic question, but you're running for the governor of California. There's 50 or so candidates. Why should I or, or the people of California vote for you? Yeah. So I'm a I'm not. I'm not a politician. I'm not a celebrity. I'm an entrepreneur. My grandfather fled communist Cuba in the 50s came to the United States and to California to pursue the American dream. Didn't want to depend on the system. So he became an entrepreneur, instilled that spirit in my father, who still runs the company he started 45 years ago, um, instilled it in me. Um, I started a business 20 years ago, small little 200 square foot office with nothing. We had humble beginnings. I built that company up to now what Inc. Magazine considers one of the fastest growing privately held companies in America. That's what we need. We need innovation in Sacramento. We don't need politics. We don't need celebrities. We need somebody who understands how to get the right people to the table to solve these problems. So we need an entrepreneur. We need to break things down and reconstruct them in different ways. And I have no personal, there, there's, there's no selfishness in this. I have so much more to lose than I have to gain here. Um, but we were on our way to, uh, we were leaving California. We were on our way to Florida and we decided to stay and fight instead. And somebody needs to stand up for our freedoms, our children, our churches, our businesses. And that's what I'm doing. Cool. Uh, so, and what is the business that you ran? Excuse me for not knowing, but, uh, yeah. What, right. what, like, what do you do and how, like, you could talk about the success of that. I'm just curious. Yeah. Yeah. I, I run an ad agency. So we basically work with fortune 500 companies um, around the globe and innovators, startups, and people that are just bringing new products and technologies and services to market. And we help them brand and we help them connect with their audiences. And yeah, so it's traditional advertising agency. Okay, so I guess uh, someone said, what are your policies? I'm going to do a joint question of like, what are some policies that, that come off the top and say, if you get into governor, I understand you're not an authoritarian unless you decide to, you know, declare an emergency order and go crazy like the rest of them. But, uh, you know, I know that there's a process and stuff, but what off the top are like the first five things that come to mind that you would do in office and, and then combine that with your policy situations? Yeah, sure. I mean, the, the first thing I'll do is I'll reverse um, a lot of these radical ideologies that are being taught in our schools, like critical race theory, um, we have third graders that are being taught how to masturbate and question their sexuality. So we'll put a freeze on all that and we'll stop it immediately. Second thing, and just as important, is with vaccines. I believe that vaccines should be a choice, not a mandate. So I would do away with any of these um, policies that are being implemented to basically force compliance on people. And the whole idea of a vaccine passport, I, I would kill those ideas out the gate. Um, you know, I'm, I'm pro small business. Uh, I'm, I'm pro choice. I mean, pro life. I'm pro life. Um, and I believe that, you know, you know, we need new, new solutions to some of the problems we're facing. So a lot of, a lot of the talk right now in California is around like water as an example. And so part of our, part of what we're doing right now is we're working with 
innovators, inventors, engineers to create solutions, sustainable solutions to some of these problems that politicians can't even think of. That mm. politicians put restrictions and regulations in place so that innovators can't innovate. So like, just quickly, you know, we, I'm working with an inventor that is able to take solar power, convert it into hydrogen, and then the generators that are used to take that hydrogen energy produce atomic water, which is clean drinking water. Now, that, the biggest plant of its kind is being uh, established in Mexico right now because the United States won't have it because of regulations and restrictions. So it's things like that will innovate. And then the last thing, and one of the most important things too, is our taxes. We pay too many, too, too high of taxes, the highest in the country. So my plan is to eliminate our income tax. And we're gonna do that by auditing the, the state. We're gonna eliminate a lot of these programs that don't do anybody any good. And then we're gonna start to generate money, just like an entrepreneur would think. So I have ideas on how California could actually generate income. So be, between generating income and lowering our expenditures, I'll be able to eliminate the income tax. Okay, I, I have a few questions and I'm, I'm actually reading some of the questions in there. Thank you guys for those, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring those into some of your questions. Two part question is, uh, you know, homelessness is a huge problem in California. Great, great answer, by the way. I think a lot of those, uh, the medical freedom is great. The, the business stuff's excellent. Um, you know, homelessness is out of control, especially in Los Angeles, but even in Orange County, even uh, definitely in San Francisco and, and all over the state, San Diego. You know, how do you think you could solve that or at least curtail it? And also, what do you think the problem is? I know you said, you know, they're not business owners and it's a lot of bureaucrats, but what do you think the, the problem is and what's the holdup in California? And then what's your cal homelessness kind of plan? Yeah, so government, what government traditionally likes to do is they like to take our taxpayer dollars and they like to try to reinvent the wheel, right? And we, we tend to overpay people to provide solutions um, that already exist. So I've been working with companies all across the state, from San Diego to San Francisco, that are already nonprofits, feet on the street. They're, they have mental health workers, social workers, ready to actually house and clothe the homeless, but they have no government support, no government visibility, and no government funding. So rather than getting into office and creating you know, new solutions to old problems, we would, we would identify these, these organizations that already exist throughout the state. We would fund them, we would back them, um, and then we would, just like a business, we would help them to scale. A lot of these nonprofits are good, but they, they, they can only focus on, say, a city or a county at a time because they don't have the infrastructure to expand that footprint. So we would come in and teach them, just like an organization, just like a company, how to scale that and spread it across the state. So there's no point in reinventing the wheel. There are good people doing that work now. They just need to be exposed, funded, and supported. I have a question because here's my solution for homelessness. I mean, I, I, I'm not going to pretend like I could solve the whole thing. But right now, I think it's a combo of two things. Like, obviously, you know, I, I would say there's a housing problem, but more importantly, a mental health problem, a drug problem, and then an enforcement problem. So I think if we had all the resources available, housing, drugs, jobs, uh, mental health, if we had all that available, at a certain point, there has to be an enforcement because I think that's you know, kindness turns into weakness sometimes. So a lot of these people, it's like an incentivization culture where they're paying them, they're allowing it, and sometimes they need to be told no. So I think, you know, there could be trillions of dollars put into homelessness. But if there's no enforcement, like we got you everything you need, we yeah. can give you all this, but you can't keep living on the street uh, in Skid Row or something. So that's, that's always been my thought. Um, you know, yeah, with, but I yeah. talked about that earlier today with regards to like enforcement. We're not allowing our police to police, right? Our, 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 our police are afraid to police. They're not, they're not enforcing our laws because of the backlash, because it's not politically correct, because they don't have support from our mayors and our governor. I think our, our mayors need to, we need to come down a lot harder on our mayors. We need to support our, our men and women in uniform, and we need to empower them to actually police, to actually enforce our laws. Because if we don't have a safe society, we don't have a sustainable society. Mm. I read a comment and I have a similar question or, or really, I guess I'm skeptical. Someone said, you know, Caitlyn Jenner has, you know, money, the, the Republican Party or Fox News back here or whatever. What are you going to do to counter that? And that was my question. Uh, that's my question for you is where, you know, in order to vote last election, I got a lot of mail and there, there's a ground game. There's an in-person game. There's 
you know, millions of dollars that certain people have and money is not everything. And I don't think it's important, but it does get you resources to reach the people of California since you hopped into the race fairly late, but still at a decent time. How are you going to get your name out there? How are you going to counter, you know, the, the big sure. money and the big corporations and stuff? And, and do you, can you, you know, um, reach everybody in just a few months? Yeah. So thankfully, God put me in a position over the last 20 years so that my line of business is marketing, branding, and getting people exposure. I couldn't be in a better industry to actually take uh, a startup, like a new brand, and actually promote it, right? Not only that, I've spent the last 20 years negotiating media contracts. So I can take a dollar and do more with a dollar than they can with 10. So mm. I, don't need, I don't need the 100 million. I, I could take $10 million and do more with it than they can with 100 million because I know how mm. to use it. I know how to target. I know how to specialize. I know how to be very strategic. So do we need money? Yes, the campaign needs money. The campaign needs to be people funded 100%. But you can trust that every single dollar that you donate to the campaign will be used to spread the word and I'll be able to multiply it 10x. And so we're going to be able to do a lot more with a lot less than a lot of these people. That's a really good point, uh, especially doing marketing and stuff myself. I remember when the whole they were trying to pin Trump, Russia, mm -hmm. Trump, Russia, and the big scoop was Russia ran these ads. They had Bernie Sanders ads, Hillary ads. They were these dumb ads and I saw 20 shares and they're like, they spent this much money for a million like impressions. And I'm thinking I do that for free every week, you know, where I, it, it, they, they're so wildly inefficient, not just them, but the other campaigns. Look it's at the answer. If I don't want to wow. infringe on I'm, I'm not a guy, I'm not an open secret or anything. But like, what is the budget or the or the goal or you know, like, how much are you willing to spend of your own money? How much of it is person funded? And like, what's, what's a goal? Because I don't even know what's reasonable yep. or, or, or a good idea for like a three month campaign. So when, when I get asked that question with regards to how much money do we need, the simple answer is enough. No more and no less than what it's going to take to get our word out and to, to build the movement. So I don't have that number yet because we're, we have so much earned media going in our favor right now. There's, so for those that don't know, there's, there's two types of media, right? There's paid media and earned media. Paid is everything in advertising. Google, Facebook, TV, radio, print, all that. That's paid media. The other part is earned media, and that doesn't cost you anything. So we're, we're, we have a very strategic plan on how to generate a lot of earned media. We're calling in a lot of favors, and we're going to get that. And that's, that's 10x every dollar anyway. And then on the paid media side, you know, it's just enough, enough to get the word out. So we don't have a number per se, but, um, but I do know that, you know, every little bit helps and we're going to stretch it and we're going to move it and we're going to do more with it than any other candidate can. So I don't have the number. I just know that we're going to continue to watch our, our exposure, our visibility. And, you know, we're only going to ask for exactly what we need. No more. I think you have something going in your favor for this election that, I, in my opinion, no candidate has jumped out to me as like a huge front runner. Obviously, Caitlyn Jenner may be the most famous person, but I don't think her engagement online is impressive for how big of a star she is. And I honestly think she's not tapping into the left wing. And I think a lot of the right wing is, is not feeling, you know, her campaign. So I think there is a void where if, if this hits 51 percent of the vote or 50 percent, uh, the winner's not going to have as much as maybe Arnold Schwarzenegger did. I think it's going to be a lower threshold that people are going to need because the vote's going to be split so many ways because there's 10 different campaigns that have pretty grassroots. On that note, I, I want to ask you, uh, what are off the end? I just thought of this question, but three things that you think the Republican Party does awesome that you love about the Republican Party, and then three things that you think that they're lacking that need to change about the Republican Party. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if, if it's about, you know, three specific things on either side. What I do know about the Republican Party is that it's on, it's on life support. The Republican Party, people are losing faith in the Republican Party. We are sending sheep into this pit when we should be sending lions. We're not, we're not lifting up candidates that are strong, that are willing to fight, that are willing to toe the line. We're seeing a lot of Republicans that are whimpering, that are, that are bending and shifting. And, and we're seeing a, a lot of Republicans who are not staying true to those core Republican values, which is sad because it's not convenient and they want to stay in office. And I think what the Republican Party needs is more of people like me 
that that will toe the line that have no special interest that are not from politics don't want to stay in politics long term are not looking for politics as a career but are looking to go in do the people's business represent the people and then turn it over to the next generation of people that will be relevant for that time i often say I, I, i'm not the candidate for from 20 years ago and i might not be the candidate from 20 years from now but i believe i'm the right candidate now and i believe that the, the republican party needs a new face it needs new representation. It needs innovation and new ideas. Yeah, like as far as what what policies have you seen them slip on? Like you said, there's not a lot of fighters. I think people like Trump early on, not just for his rhetoric, but I mean, you know, you're used to plain boring people and you're used to people who kind of just, they have no oomph to them. But like what, have you seen certain policies? Like I know for me, I could answer after you, but there's certain things that I believe in and certain fiscally conservative things I believe in that I feel like the GOP does a good lip service job but when push came to shove you know they kind of caved I'll give you an example just to give you a, a, a you know during March and April of the pandemic I understand it was a difficult decision but you have McConnell and Trump you know essentially print trillions of dollars which is one of the things that led I think Venezuela to hyperinflation and when you shut down business print money I mean, it's a very it's a very risky thing to do. And, I, you know, it seems like they don't even talk about it or care. So things like we're, we're fighting socialism and they're, they're telling me how strong they are. And then when it comes time to do it, they don't really do it. You know, that's one for me that I, I see them kind of dropping the ball that's on. The but thing. any specific not policies you see that are that's like, well, they're not really doing much. Well, there's there's a lot of backdoor politics that are happening. You know, Trump, as he left office, we, we saw a lot of that that he had kind of leave and he started to do things that just seemed a little out of place and 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 inconsistent with his entire platform um I, you know i have conversations regularly with people who think he could have done more with regards to voting integrity could have done more to fight to stay in office the the, the position that he took on the vaccine status and rushing to get there and then becoming a huge advocate for getting in, and then his daughter followed suit, and they, they almost became the poster child for, for getting the vaccine. I mean, those are inconsistent with our values and beliefs in a free society and being able to choose and have freedoms and liberties. And it just, you know, I, again, that's, that's why I think people have lost faith in politicians and why we need a new generation of people that come from outside of politics to go in and fix things. So, and I represent that, but I know there are a lot of people behind me that are excited to actually run for office and to implement this type of change. Got you. I'm trying to do a three-way debate either on here, it might be the easiest way and get a few other candidates. I know there's quite a few. Would you be willing to come on and have a conversation or a debate? Because I think that would be one way to not only get ex excited, excited, but to see see people's ideas and kind of personalities clash and see see you know get get people more hyped up for certain things. Hundred percent. My my favorite setting is a debate or panel discussion. Getting up in front of crowds and giving a monologue is just not me. I like to engage. I like the energy. I have nothing to hide. I'm completely transparent. So any time that you were able to get a group of us together so we could debate, have intellectual conversation, and challenge each other's thinking, I'm, I'm in. One thing about office, because I think uh, it's really important to get new people in, um, but people ask me, you should refer office, you should refer office. Uh, I'm not interested in it, but if I was, I probably think I would study law or have a team around me that uh, understood law, because I think a lot of politics, a lot of lawyers, a lot of legal stuff, a lot of prosecution, or, you know, and, and, and like someone like a DeSantis, I was reading his uh, Wikipedia, he had a few of those things in his back pocket, which probably helped him adapt to the political world because it, it's it can be very similar do you have any experience or a team of, of people who are you know into legal stuff and and ready to take on like these huge bills and is that a concern as someone that's new uh or, or not yeah so as a business owner i'm surrounded with lawyers and i know i know tons of people in law but more importantly one of the one of the biggest sectors that we play in next to health is education and we have a lot of um, people who teach law, who teach constitutional law, who um, are at the forefront of, of you know, uh, teaching policy and have, are very extremely opinionated on policy. And then as an entrepreneur, I, I sit at the table with CEOs and executives from um, large companies who are innovating in their space, right, in energy, education, healthcare, technology. So 
I've already begin I've already begun to assemble a coalition of individuals that would sit down and and help to write policy, help to um, you know help to innovate, help to address a lot of our problems with fire, with water, with you know tax reform, all of that. Like I did that from the beginning before I even decided that I was going to guess. I needed to understand the team that I would start to build around me, and thankfully, I've built an entire career being at the table with some of the most influential people in America. Many of them, California residents, who are just like waiting for the opportunity to sit at that table to to, to talk about changing things. I'm just curious, and then I have another question. But how many employees is your company? Like, how big is it? Just curious. Yeah people here in our headquarters in uh, Irvine, California, and then we have about 20 freelancers that work around the country. Okay, cool. I, re I read a comment because I've been reading some. Someone said, I'm not sure if they were black or not. I think they were. Not that matters, but they said, what are you specifically going to do for the black community? And I want to ask this, like, I understand you'll be the governor for all Californians, but you know, there's a lot of niche groups, like, uh, obviously white, uh, but black, Hispanic, like, what do you think is the, the, the best thing for certain, you know, communities and uh, like that's the type of thing? Do you look at it like I'm going to just be the governor for all Californians or, or as I think you're Hispanic as well, you know? Um, yeah, is there a specific people, message or, or a goal for like, yeah, I don't know. People want representation. People want people that reflect, you know, the, the, the you know, especially governor. We've never had or we, we don't often have politicians that reflect their constituents, right? If you look at California, it's minority. It's 40% Hispanic. But if you look at the other minorities, it's majority minority. And that representation doesn't go all the way up to Sacramento. So like, I, I'm, I'm the best representation of California than anyone running right now. I mean, you have, you know, my family are immigrants, 50% uh, Mexican, 50% Cuban, 100% American. So my, my story is very consistent with California, the American dream, fleeing a communist country through the American dream, entrepreneurial. So what, I, what I'm able to do and how I'm going to be able to connect with the Hispanic community is it's, it's the same message in a different messenger. And sometimes that makes all the difference. So when, when I talk about border control and immigration law, you know, a lot of times you have, you have these older Caucasian elites talking about strict borders. Hispanics don't want to hear that because it's in the wrong messenger. But if I if I come and I'm able to talk on the importance and significance of strong immigration laws and and, and having a safe border, that, that message resonates differently with a, a, a demographic that I can relate to and they can relate to me. Yeah, and I, it's, it's a tough question because I know on one hand, you know, everybody's American. On the other hand, I know Trump tried to, you know, he, he did certain like black policies and Hispanic policies. I'm actually part Puerto Rican, but I'm mostly white European. Uh, it was a little weird to see him do an American dream plan focused towards Latinos where, I, you know, I, like I get the sentiment of it, but I think then a lot of people also feel slighted. So it's a tough thing to weigh in on. I will say this and then real quick in the comments, this Diego for governor guy, he's like, I'm this, I'm that. Who, I'm not sure who that is. Is are you running or I, I I don't know. I'm just curious. Somebody let me know who that guy is and maybe I'll bring him on after. But um, <laughs> you know, my question is, all right, say like we'll we'll take not even say race, but like a lot of the very dangerous areas of of uh, Oakland or or Los Angeles. You know, there's a there's a heavy minority population. These are some of the more dangerous areas um, in SoCal or or North Cal. You know, how do you stop crime? You know, how, how do you crack down on crime? I know you've mentioned the police thing a lot, but that seems to be a problem, not just in California, but around the country where there's certain neighborhoods that the death rate is high. And I've, I've volunteered in certain neighborhoods and you go into the schools and there's children uh, all over the walls, memorials of children who died. And it's so sad. And the media doesn't care because there's no police or white angle to it, I think, and, or Republican angle. So they kind of just brush it up. How, how do you clean up some of these neighborhoods or at least make them safer for the residents? Yeah, so there's there's short term and long term, right? I always say that a lot of the problems that we face as a society, those are the symptoms of a deeper disease, right? So when we look at homelessness and we look at crime, we look at um, mental health, a lot of and and drug abuse, and we look at you know crime in general. 
those are the symptoms of a bigger problem, which are broken homes. And we don't look at that as a long-term thing. We need to focus on incentivizing the family unit again. We don't have that. The government has set up incentives for broken families. We'll pay you more if you, if the, you know, the father of your children doesn't live at home. We'll incentivize you for a broken home. Like that's tearing at our moral fabric, right? Like that's the disease. And so we need to do twofold. We need, we need to address the symptoms that are the now and, and, and find solutions to all of those problems. But ultimately what we need to do is we need to reinforce family again. We need to reinforce the family unit. We need to reconstruct that. We need to incentivize families that stay together and give them the tools and the resources to do that, to become entrepreneurs, to be, to be independent and not depend so much on the government. We've created a, a society of individuals who are more incentivized to stay home than to go back to work right now. We have small businesses that cannot open because people would rather get an unemployment check than to actually show up for work. It's broken. The whole system's broken. But with regards to crime, I mean, we need to support our police and we need to allow them to police. And we need our police departments to look more like the communities they serve. So, like, we need to look at our hiring practices and say, hey, you know what? In these inner cities, we need police officers that look like the communities they serve so that there can be a healthy dialogue there. So the police are not feared, but welcomed in the communities. But ultimately, a lot of the, a lot of the crime that happens is, is a byproduct of weak leadership, weak mayors, and, and a, a police force that's not equipped to enforce the laws. I would change all that. I think that's a good answer. I, I was talking to somebody whose son is a policeman in Long Beach, and he was saying that his son sees just on the job that, um, you know, certain the, the I won't say that the city's not segregated, but you do have certain neighborhoods where you have black and Hispanic. And he said in the Hispanic neighborhoods, you know, there's more of like a family unit. Uh, yeah. And he said in the in the black one, he's like there there isn't that family cohesive unit all the time. And like you know, uh, it does lead to I think you know, there, there's not a community. And when there's not a community, people stray. And when people stray, they're lost and doing stuff. So he had noticed that just where I, I like that answer. And I think the media is always like, don't you, that's a right wing talking point. I'm like, there's nothing wrong with wanting the family to stay together and the father's in the house. So um, I, I have a question. I don't know how much time you have, but there's somebody in the uh, chat. I don't know who this guy is. Maybe you know him. I don't know. Maybe he's a competitor, Diego for governor, but he's saying he wants to come in would you be willing to debate him, debate him or would you rather like if you're if you're in a rush i might just bring him on after because i don't even really know who he is but people are crying am i you're afraid to have him on i'm like i don't relax let's we'll, we'll take it piece by piece well i'm not afraid to have anyone on i would love for you to have gavin newsom on right now that would be a healthy debate i would love to have that conversation right now so um but yeah you're more than welcome to bring him on i have probably about five minutes worth of battery you caught me in the parking lot so uh, like, no worries so yeah, well, I, I guess I'll... he didn't even send me an invite so that diego guy i mean if, if he wants to send an invite i'll have him on after since his, his phone's dying but um yeah i guess uh and since you got five minutes i'll let you just kind of make your pitch and stuff i think uh you know i tried to think of unique and creative questions to ask i like what you said about medical freedom i think uh a lot of what you said was on point and now the question is you know getting that win so i guess how, how are you going to make the ha make it happen any last words and any any last yeah, yeah for, for sure i mean look there are a lot of people coming into the race some of them are celebrities some of them uh, are in the media some of them are career politicians we're in this mess because of decisions we've made in the past and so if we think about traditional logic and we think about electing people we traditionally elect, we're gonna run into the same problems perpetually over and over again. And so whether, whether you agreed with Trump as a person, as a policymaker, whatever, what you can say is that the country was in a better financial state when he was in office because he saw things differently. He saw things as an entrepreneur. And so what we need to do is we need a different approach. My grandfather fled a communist country there's nobody running for office that knows more intimately than I do what it means to have all of your freedoms taken from you. And right now in California, we're living as close to being a communist country as a communist country can get. We have, you know, our churches shut down. We have, you know, the government in control of the media. They're indoctrinating our kids at school. Businesses were shut down. And now they're trying to force compliance of, of an experimental drug. That is communist at its 
core level. And so what we need to do is we need to rethink our approach. We need to rethink the candidates that we elect and get behind. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a family man. I met my wife when she was 17. I was 19. We've been together 26 years. 24 of them have been, you know, we've been married. I have five beautiful children, four of my own, one adopted. We were foster care parents for a season. We know the value of family unit. We know the importance of having a moral compass. And I bring all of that. My, my 20 years of being on, a successful entrepreneur, I bring all of my contacts, all of my affiliates, all of my connections. I bring my heart. I bring the, you know, um, you know, my, my spirituality, my faith, I bring it to office because I think more than ever, California has lost its soul. This is not just a fight for a political office. This is a fight for our souls and our soil. And we need somebody that's going to advocate for justice. And there's no one running that will do what I will do the way I will do it. And so it's time for change. And I'm that change. Appreciate you. I just want to say thank you real quick to some super chats, spicy street combos, Lisa loves one, Linda, Maddie, the real Andy Butane, Moxie Mop, Rodrigo and Yoshi. Appreciate y'all. And I want to say for the record, uh, you know, Anthony said he would debate and the other guy's completely gone. So I mean, the Diego guy isn't even in my, uh, you know, because people are like he doesn't want to debate. I'm like, dude, the Diego guy just disappeared. So he's welcome to come on after. Thank you for your time. Uh, yeah, man. Good speaking with you. You as Appreciate well. I'm, I'm going to try to get two or three people on just because I, I love the debate format. And, I, uh, and sure. uh, this was just off top. I'm drinking a tea. That's just how the, how my life works sometimes. But um, appreciate your time. I wish yeah. you the best of luck. And I'll do what I can to try to organize events to, you know, raise awareness. And also, I, I think, put ideas to the test because that's all I could think of now to answer. I, I was impressed with a lot of answers. And appreciate you for your time. God bless you. Yeah, and, appreciate uh, you, know, you, man. God bless you, too. Take care. You as well. All right, so my man Diego could come on. I, I just want to say, too, some <laughs> fonts. I'm not reading that. That's funny, though. My man opened the schools. I know he's younger. I think he's like 16 or 17. So but he's out here saying, you, you don't want to bring on this guy. You don't like, don't come on. If you don't know me by now, you don't need to play me like that, little bro. You know, like, I'm not afraid to bring on another person. Let me have a conversation with my man. I'll bring somebody on when I feel like it. I felt like it. The guy ran away. So don't, you can do what you want, but don't try to paint me like I'm afraid to talk to some. Oh my God, anomalies, anomalies, the deep state now. He doesn't want to have on Diego. Bro, Diego isn't even in my chat, okay? And he could come on when he comes in. So they don't, let, let's, let, let, let's not do that right now. <sighs> let's see. Yeah, he, he definitely seemed like a good guy. I'll say, I'll, I might put that up on my, I have a clips channel, so I'm, I'm going to put that interview up on my new clips channel. It's Dream Rare Clips. Uh, if you search it, you probably won't find it. I think it's it's not available yet because it's too small. It's on my, uh, it's on my uh, Telegram, but I'm going to put that on my new clip channel, which I have for, for specific reasons like this. Answers that impressed me the most, I think, out of him, just to be reflect on it i really liked the fact that he's talking about medical freedom because that's that's like a huge blind spot to the republican party and if you don't get the the medical tyranny aspect of this you're i don't know you're missing out so i, I appreciate that i think his uh, his tax policy sounded good he didn't expand on it we could talk later but lower taxes business stuff that's all good his ad his ad answer is very impressive to me because he's totally right they waste so much money like that I remember during Trump's campaign when they're complaining about foreign influence and I'm reading the influence and I'm like, guys, you don't realize how minuscule this is compared to what we're doing with no budget. So, you know, uh, making your dollar go a long way. And uh, the answer with the, uh, you know, a lot of these neighborhoods and stuff where the crime is tough, but these Black Lives Matter organizations, I hate to say this, but I'll say it because I think it's true. As somebody who cares about somebody, I have a big heart for everybody. Um, I don't think liberals care about black people at all. I think they exploit them when there's a cop or a white narrative and, and they could raise money off it and make a big scene. But when it comes to black children getting murdered uh, routinely in, in cities like Chicago and routinely in areas like Compton and Watts, where it's not all the time, but way too much, there's no liberals to be found. It's because they don't care about the black kids. They, they only care when they can exploit their death to make a name for themselves or to make money for themselves or to, or to, or to put their fists in the air. So it's like, how much do you care about the kids if you don't care about the kids 99.9% .9 of the time? So I think Trumina's onto something when he says, uh, you know, the, the family is a, big, is a big part of it because when you don't have a family, 
or you don't have the right family unit, you, 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 you lean on something else. And that's when the government swoops in. So it's, um, someone said Diego had to take a call. He's back. Brother, open the schools now. You know I love you. I had you on my little bro. I'm just saying, don't 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 try to paint me like I'm afraid to have him on. Just just ask me politely. You know, have my guy on. This is my guy. Explain to me why you want to have him on. You don't got to play this game like Anomaly's afraid to have somebody on his live stream. Come on, don't 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 play me like that. All right, Diego, if he's in here, Diego Martinez. I don't know much about it, but he's. Listen, this is what it is. I'm just trying to have a tea. I'm out here. I'm out here providing some news source for the election. So, Diego. How's it going, buddy? How are you? I'm um, all right. How are you doing? Life is good. So, uh, what you're running for governor of California or, or somewhere else? I'm running for governor of California. Sorry, I'm outside my house. Probably can't see me very well. I'm still at work. So, no worries. Because uh, um, it said 2022. So, I guess the, the recall election is this year and then there's another election next year, correct? Right. So, what happened to me is, <clears throat> excuse me, I started early in March of 2020. Because I okay. knew I had to get my name out there. I knew it was going to be a tough race. So we didn't know the recall was coming when we first started. So when we started was, you know, got to lay the uh, legwork, just like any company that you ever own. You got to do the groundwork. You got to lay the foundation so you can build on it. So that's what I did. I worked every single uh, recall booth there was. I did every Trump rally for over a year. I was just on the road a lot trying to get my name out on a small budget because I'm self-funding this. You know, I, I didn't want to take anybody's money. Because when you take somebody's money and they don't know who you are, you're stealing from them. There's been candidates that take people's money and don't even make it to the end. I know about four or five that have already dropped out that started when I did. And their fundraising was great, but you stole people's money because you didn't do nothing with it. A lot of people in the comments are saying they want to see you in the light. So I don't know what you can uh, do or what you want to do. But I just that's just what they're saying. You know, I uh, to let, the me see. let me just go on inside then. How's that? <laughs> It's, it's so kind of hot here. out here, man. It's 109 out here. Oh, sheesh. All right. The, well, the coolest yeah, place in my house is working at night is outside. Yeah, so I guess, you know, everybody and their mama's running. And, uh, you know, every like, what what separates you? What what makes your plan better? Um, what Yeah, what's, what's the... Well, with me, and I've been running on the same thing, I have real solutions for real California problems. I'm not talking about everybody and their grandmother knows... The California has a bunch of problems, right? We could go down the street and we could talk about problems. Yet nobody wants to talk about solutions. When's the last time you actually asked somebody to actually say, hey, I have a solution for this problem, and the solution actually makes sense? I ran uh, multi-million dollar car dealerships for 17 years. I took dealerships that were failing, and we turned them into profitable dealerships where they made money. We took them from where they were going bankrupt into staying in the same family business for a long time. We took the number two. Hyundai dealership that's up in the middle of nowhere. And we went from selling one car every three months to selling over a hundred cars a month. So I know business and I know California is a business. We could talk about the homeless problem. We could talk about our immigration problem. We could even talk about our medical problems that we have because half of California don't even have medical insurance. So I opened this very carefully. You can ask me anything you want. Yeah, we, we've never talked before. I've never met you before, but thank you for having me on. By the way, no problem. Yeah, no it problem. Kind of bothered, you, the last guy when I said something, it kind of bothered me when he said I could reach out to the Latino community. Well, he's second generation. I'm first generation immigrant. Came to the United States when I was six years old. I'm fluent in Spanish. I reach out to the Hispanic community. I'm actually I came here on a uh, uh, visitor's visa. Get, got my U.S. citizenship in 2008. So when you want to talk about living the American dream, I might not have the millions, but I'm living the American dream. I'm the living soul proof that you can come to this country with nothing. And the day you die, you can have anything you ever put your mind to it. That's called so the real American dream. You were saying everybody's talking about problems, right? No one's talking about solutions. But what is, so what's your solution besides well, the, yeah. Let's start with the homeless problem. And that's okay. a California problem. It's not a county by county. It's a uh, California problem. 70% of our homeless people have mental health issues. SB 640 has been sitting in Gavin Newsom's desk for over two years, and he will not sign it. 1985, the Supreme Court made Ronald Reagan shut down in order that nobody could be actually incarcerated for mental health. But you have 90-day window. If we sign SB 640, we actually have a better window where a relative can actually go in there and actually put your mental health. 
But right now we have a 90 day window to be able to put people in mental health because they need it. So we're going to open mental health up. Once we open up mental health, that should take care of about 70% of the homeless uh, population. You also have about 30% of the homeless people that actually want to go to work, want actually a hand up. So what are we going to do? We're going to take the old warehouses, the old military bases that are just laying there that the state and counties already own them and bring those people in. And they're going to help us build their housing. Not only are they going to help us build their houses, we're going to give them uh, trade schools so that they can actually learn a trade. So we're going to have a rehab center for alcohol and for uh, drug abuse. And we're going to have a counselor on there so they're held accountable for what they're doing every day. I have a question because, uh, um, you know, a lot of people in California, we have a lot of first generation immigrants. We have a lot of second generation immigrants. You know, I understand, uh, you know, the dynamic of like I can reach out better, but, you know, you're going to need the votes of, of tens of thousands of second generation. So do you feel like you slighted them with that comment? Like they're not they're not Hispanic enough because they're second generation. No, I, I actually don't believe that comment was meant in any auditory way towards anybody. What it was said is uh, the man before me said, hey, I'm the best because I'm this. Well, you're talking about your parents' immigration here. You're not talking about your own. You didn't experience going through immigration. You didn't experience being in a country illegally. You didn't experience the hardship of your mom working as a waitress trying to make ends meet for five kids. So when I say that, it's no disrespect to anybody. It's that I actually understand the hardship firsthand. I also understand that if it wasn't for Ronald Reagan, I wouldn't be here. As people say, well, you have to have merit, right? Well, if you saw me when I was six years old, what merit did I have? I have zero merit. So it's not about merit. It's about giving somebody a hand up and an opportunity for them to be able to show us their merit and their ability and their worth. That's the difference. Top five problems in California right now. Top, if, off the top. One, two, three, Home four, five. They don't have to be in order, but what do you think? Water, taxes. Jobs, education, health, and we can keep going because it's, it's about 10 different problems in California and we need to address today. The water problem in the Central Valley is unbelievable. We're dumping more water into the ocean than what we're keeping. There's small towns that are dying right now because they don't have enough water. There's towns that are taxing their people to death because they can't have enough water coming in. Our water situation can be fixed. We have got to stop the water wages. We have got to actually build reservoirs. We have got to stop the train to nowhere, take that budget for right now, and actually move it over into infrastructure where we can build dams so we can have water and our reservoirs build up. We have desolivation plants sitting down south that nobody's using. Government Brown shut them down, actually. So we got to reopen them, work with private sectors to get them reopened. Build a reservoir where we can have three years worth of water here in the state of California. So the assets water, we can build a pipeline into Arizona and to Nevada and sell our assets of water that we're creating. But it's a shame that we're dumping more water into the ocean than what we're actually keeping for ourselves. Uh, Mendocino County, the Bermuda Triangle, we call it, right? They're actually having to truck water into their uh, county because they're out of water. So California has a lot of problems in a lot of different places. We have got to start addressing the problems and start getting solutions going uh, at a time. We don't have time to waste. That's the biggest problem. Our education is in the dumps, number 48, which I actually think is about 50 right now. One of the worst, you have got to break up the teachers union. And how do you do that? You call them in, you take uh, the Ronald Reagan approach when they tell you they don't want to go to work because you don't want to uh, mandate vaccination. That's parents' choice. Uh, CRT should never be taught in school. Transgender should never. Our teachers don't have a psychology degree to be able to teach somebody what sex they are. But we're allowing that to happen. So you take it and you tell the school board and the school uh, unions, go back, do your job. This is what we're going to teach. They're going to tell me no. And I'm going to say, great, I accept your resignation. Because guess what? When somebody uh, goes on strike, when somebody tells you no, they're not going to work, they just quit their job. We do not need to employ those people again. Then we start over. We get new superintendents and we get all the teachers that want to come to work to come to work and teach what we expect them to teach. I mean, we could go on all day about problems and solutions, but see, I'm, a, I'm actually the only person that's actually giving you a real solution for the real problems that are going on. All right, and just which, uh, which candidates out of everybody running, who impresses you? You could say none, I guess, because you're running, but just this is my answer. Which candidates that are running for California impress you, and which ones do you think are, you know, 
are, are, are you, you just are like, I, I definitely, if I don't win, I don't want them to win. If I had to say, if I don't win, I don't want them to win. Jenner, or, yeah, or if you didn't win, who you would want to win. Okay, Jenner's a no. Cox is a no. Cox fell asleep. He brought the bear. He had to go hide, uh, uh, go to sleep at 802 last election cycle. Faulkner took a knee with Black Lives Matter in the middle of San Diego. I'll only take a knee to God, and no man will bend my knee. Then you got Kevin Kiley, who's a fake, that I wouldn't vote for him because I met him. When I met him, and this is how you can tell about a man. When I met him, I told him who I was. He said, that's ambitious and turned his back on me. When I see him every time, he'll stand right in front of me and will not even acknowledge I'm there. You can go back through all my Facebook, through all my videos, and you can see him standing there. He will not acknowledge me even when I'm there. He voted yes on SB5 and SB10, which sounds really good, except it's going to raise your property taxes. And think about the people who are on a fixed income that can't afford their taxes right now. Imagine what their properties, they're going to take these people's properties away because they're not thinking the long term. Short term solutions don't work. We have got to think about our future and our kids. And that's not being done right now. I haven't met a candidate that I would say I would vote for right now because I don't believe in any of the ones that are running. I don't believe in career politicians. I believe in term limits. I believe that we go in, we do our job, and that the California people are our bosses, and we do as they want. Somebody asked, am I pro-life? I am pro-life, and I'm pro-adoption. But guess what? I will follow the law of California. I will honor the law. If people want that to be a law, we'll put it on the voting system, let the California pick. I will not pick and choose what laws I want to follow. I will follow the law. All right. I, I mean, I liked your answer about who you didn't like there. That was uh, that was definitely pretty raw. I guess my question is, and I ask everybody this, you know, I, it's a tough question because when you're in it, you're, you're in it to win it. But, uh, you know, is, is it possible for, for you to win? I don't know what your budget is. I know you said you put in a few years. Um, you know, it's going to be a lot of different people. Can you compete with the big money? Can you compete with the, uh, you know, the people who got all everybody's mailboxes filled with, you know, stuff? So I'm going to tell you a quick little simple answer here. Look at the Republican Party, right? Everybody's in the same platform. Everybody's going to you. Everybody's going to Tatum. Everybody's going here. I'm not going there. I don't need to go there because you got 22% Republican Party in California. We're going to get our share because people like what we have to say. We're going to get our share because people believe in our values, because we are conservative. You have got to go to the left because if you can't go to the left, you're staying out of the race. You follow yeah, me? So, my question is this, like, I, I understand, like, social media does play some sort of factor. So you had the, the last guy I had on, you know, he's he's going to bigger names in the conservative party to get his name out there. I just know from from voting in California and other things, you know, there's there's other ways between, I guess, like advertisements, people spend a lot of money online. But I really think the mail in thing, especially for anybody over like 30 is huge like I, I learned a lot through my last election i got a lot of mail and i was able to decipher between the candidates not just by what they said like i'm believing the propaganda sometimes they'd say he wanted me to wear a mask or he didn't want to wear a mask i was like well i like that guy better you know so they kind of snitched on themselves by mistake but i learned a lot through the mail where it's like yeah, i understand that you're, you're saying you don't need influencers and stuff there's nothing wrong with that but is is that a bad thing to get your name out there with a with a big conservative influ influencer yep. and, and do you have a way to like you know, it's like, okay, people believe in me. It's like, but at, at a certain point, even for, say, me, uh, I'm big on Facebook. I have 600 million views. Still, if I was running for office, I need to make sure everybody in that state knows who I am or else it doesn't matter how much they like me if they don't know who I am. So here, here's the catch. I, I go to all the influencers. I've been pretty much on everybody's show. Thank you for having me on yours. Um, yeah. But there comes a point where the Republican Party know who you are or most people know who you are. So you got to take a little bit of what you have here, but you have to go to this side and you got to start getting in other people. There's Democrats are conservative people that believe in the same stuff that we believe. The only problem is that they don't want to change parties because they're the old 1960s uh, Democratic Party of JFK, which is now the Republican Party per values. Now, somebody, if you look at me, I, have, I go to the flea markets. I talk to Hispanics every week. I go on Spanish radio. I go out and talk to minority communities. I was just at the Vietnam American Memorial in LA talking to uh, minority communities. I have got to go under minority communities because guess what? We are all here for the same reason. We all want a better future. I believe that if we sit down and talk, it doesn't matter what party. I actually believe both parties have failed us. 
You asked Trevino a question and he ran about, didn't answer it. What's wrong with the Republican Party? I can tell you flat out what's wrong with the Republican Party and what's the good parts of the Republican Party because I'm a Republican and I understand it. And I'm not afraid to tell you, the Republican Party has lost their way and the way they lost their ways was when they turned their back on Donald Trump and they act more like Democrats and not Republicans. They turn, uh, their party problem is that they forgot what we stand for in our values. We had a Republican president there and everybody, their balls got cut off or something because nobody could stand behind them and stand there. But yet you have people who went and asked for Donald Trump's endorsement and then they backstabbed them. Valadero's is one of them. Marjorie, Marjorie Taylor Greene, where was the uh, Republican Party when they needed, when she needed their help? They turned their back on her. Yeah, you got somebody like Maxine Waters sitting there staying hate on everybody and nobody says anything she still has her job so the problem with the republican party flat out they're all about money they're about name recognition how much money the republican party has and they lost their sense of responsibility for the california people what's uh, right about said, do you like Rand paul or ron paul what do you think of ron paul and his son Rand paul i, I think that they uh they're wishy-washy just like i think about uh ted cruz i think they flip-flop on whichever opportunity there is that day and that's the point. Do you, know, you know his father, Ron Paul? Though I, he's not very flip floppy. I would say I would say he, he got kind of the Trump treatment before Trump because he's he's pr he's pretty hard. You you know Ron Paul or no? Uh, I don't know the dad. I know the son. Okay, yeah. The the I mean the the father was he he didn't ever really get that much clout because he 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 held his own. He's definitely not he's not an he's not like a loud guy. He's a he's a small guy, but uh, yeah, he's he's he held his own. Now look at um. Jordan. Jordan's uh, always sticking in his place. Congressman Jordan. Look at uh, Matt Gates, another guy that's outspoken, but stands his ground. What we need is people that aren't going to flip flop. We need business Here, people. Here's my question about Jim Jordan. I love his rhetoric. I love his mouth. He also takes campaign donations from Google, even Trump. You know, I'm fighting big tech, bro. You were in office for four years. You know, like they, their mouth says they're fighting big tech, but I, you know, I didn't see it while they were in office. And that's the difference between me and them. I don't have any of that big money backing me. And I won't because I'm not for sale. You know, I'll show everybody what my tax returns are. As a matter of fact, I'm turning them into the state of California before uh, the election. I'll show everybody what I have. I'm not ashamed of what I have. I work for every penny I've ever made. But I will do a job. That's what I get paid to do is a job and to do the best job that I can for the California people and work with both sides of the aisle. I have one more question. Okay, so I think for sure a lot of, here's my thing about Democrats in California. Conservatives think they're so stuck in their ways, but a lot of people don't know that much, you know, and that they just lean left and, and same with right. So, you know, there isn't a lot of outreach to liberals. Um, you know, it's more like, and I get why, because we live in, in some ways, two different worlds of policies, but say I'm, I'm gonna do my liberal impression. I come up to you, I say, it's Diego, right? Hey, Diego, you know, I like Lady Gaga and, you know, uh, I, I like Jay-Z or whatever. Uh, what, wh why should I vote for you? Like, I, that was a terrible impression. Well, you know, I'm a liberal. What, why, why should I vote for a Republican? Why should I vote for you? What, what can you do for me? You know, one thing I tell everybody, I'm working for the state of California. I'm not working for one party or the other. You're a Californian, you're a taxpayer, and you deserve the right representation. Let me ask you this. Has your party uh Represented you the way you wanted. Have they shown you that you value, that you're a valued person? Ninety-eight percent of us will say no. Neither one of our parties have valued us. The difference is you can actually have this conversation with me. The difference is I'm out at every rally. I'm out here talking to you right now. When have you seen John Cox or any of the big name people actually stop by and actually talk to people? Because if you ever go to the, if you ever go to one of their speeches, they do their speeches and they leave the next door. Okay, but say I'm 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 liberal. Okay, I, I'm just this is not really me, but I'm just saying like okay, you know, to me, Black Lives Matter, the climate's changing, and we're all gonna die, and I, I wear two masks everywhere. How, what what are you gonna do for me? How, why why should I vote for you? You know, I believe that your mask is your choice, first of all, and we're an American, we're free. I'm not gonna instigate or mandate any vaccination or mask, but I will respect your rights as a freedom to be able to uh, have your mask. I will also bring something back that's been gone in the state of California. I'm actually gonna bring back 
principles to allow you to be able to make a better future. I'm also going to lower taxes with my immigration reform program so that it's across the board. We, we make more money on revenue, yet you get to keep more in your pocket so you don't have to worry about. I'm also have a plan for affordable housing so you can own a house. Now, if your party is talking about any of this, where you earn it, it's not given to you, and you're not a slave of the state, then I'm probably not the right person for you to vote for. What I'm about is freedom, freedom of growth, and opportunity. And, and I'm very frank. I'm not for everybody. Not everybody's going to agree with what I have to say. Not everybody's going to agree that I'm probably the best candidate out there. But I tell you what, I'm the most hardworking candidate that you're going to find out there. Not only that, I'm going to work for the people who employ me, and that's every single Californian. And I care about the state. Otherwise, seriously, I wouldn't be doing this. I guess I have one more question. You, you said that Reagan is the reason you're here. Is that Was that through his uh, amnesty situation? Uh, so Reagan in 85, he's not the reason I'm here. We were already in America, uh, but our visitor's visa ran out and we were getting ready to leave when Reagan came out with an amnesty program, which the Democrats actually backfired on him. Yeah, because so, a lot so, of people in the Republican Party, you know, they, they, they say that that was a mistake. Um, but when it when it gives you citizenship, I mean, you know, it's like <laughs> depends where you're at in the world. But what I guess my question is, what would you say to Republicans who said that that was a huge mistake because it's led to the, you know, the Democratic flipping? And then also my question is, people wanted to know your policy on immigration, legal, illegal, et cetera. So I'll let you take it away. And that's going to be the last question. OK, so somebody asked me about the Second Amendment. I'm very pro Second Amendment. I'm a constitutionalist. I think we should have constitutional rights when it comes to the Second Amendment. Reagan's uh, immigration program could have worked, would have worked, had the Democrats kept their side of the bargain, but they didn't. They backpedaled on it, which caused a big immigration problem in the United States after that. So when Republicans say, hey, Reagan's plan was a failure, it didn't do us any good, it actually opened up all this, I'm not going to say that they're wrong. But what happened was nobody held the uh, Democrat Party to their feet and made them do what they had promised to do. Reagan jumped the gun a little bit. Am I grateful? Yeah, I am, because I was actually able to get a green card and be in the States legally. Uh, if I would have gone back to South America where we came from, the government would have pulled us away from my mom. And we would have been in an orphanage. That's where we were going. Uh, we had a loaf of bread to eat for a couple of weeks is what five of us ate. Okay, so. Even at six years old, you understood where you were going. So America and California has given me an opportunity to own my own business, help other people be employed, understands the value of a middle class and understands the value of humanity. With okay, so yeah, legal, what's your immigration policy? Illegal immigration, legal immigration. I understand your come up and, uh, you know, I see both sides of the coin. But yeah, what's your, what would be your policy? Well, right now, because immigration is so messed up, the first thing we have to do is finish the wall. We have got to build the wall. And we have got to close the borders down for a, for a section of time. You have people who are here getting free benefits, free insurance, who have never paid one single tax dollar into California, yet they're taken out of the system. Those aren't the people that you really want here. So how do you get rid of them? Deporting people would just kill our economy right now. We deported the 10 million illegals that we have. So... You take their uh, free stuff and you exchange it for a four-year work permit, a California four-year work permit where they can actually be here for four years legally so we could do a background check and make sure that's the people that we have here. But not only that, they will no longer be sucking off our economy, but they will be paying into it and contributing into our economy. After the four years, then they still would have to apply for your green card. They still have to go through all that waiting process. If you break the law during that section, you go back to your country, we deport you. Not only that, that will also free up the backlog that we have right now, that we have people in the United States that have been waiting for years to get their paperwork, but they haven't been able to because so many people are flooded. Now, the biggest question is how do you stop people from coming here, right? Because you can't just keep letting everybody come here. So when you close the gates and you say, I'm going to give a work, California work permit, you have got to prove that you've been in California for a year. You just can't come from Arizona and say, hey, I'm going to come here and work. We have got to take care of the people in California. We have got to uh, deregulate California so we can bring more jobs back into California so everybody will have an opportunity to make a better living. Okay, I, I'm going to... I'm, I'm gonna um...
Thank you for the interview. I'm going to try to schedule a debate and I'll, I'll consider you as one of the candidates because I would love to see you argue with somebody. I think that would be highly entertaining and uh, appreciate you, brother. Thank you for coming on and finding a life. And, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to trying to schedule a, a, a debate between as many of the candidates as I can. I'll check out more of your stuff. I haven't heard of you. So uh, you and, and uh, the, the other candidate, I appreciate you guys for being timely. That's what it's about. I don't have you know, the biggest audience on Instagram as far as in the live right now. But I do, I, if I post this on uh, on my channels, it'll it'll reach quite a few people. I appreciate it. And uh, July 15th, we're actually going to be down your way. And there's actually going to be a debate. There's about nine candidates. I'd like to send you the information. And if you'd like to come, let me know. Okay, uh, yeah. And then you can even air it. Message me. Thank you, brother. All right. Hey, I appreciate it. Thank you. And for anybody who actually made it, start telling you to get me on I appreciate them doing that, but I asked them not to do that because I don't want anybody to be disrespectful that's following me or liking me. That's not the way oh, we do yeah. it. No, I like when people yell and say, but a mom, but, but it's my one. I, I know the kid. He's a nice guy. He's a younger kid too, but he was like, no, I, I, maybe he wasn't talking to me, but people were like, you're afraid to put him on. It's like, I, I like when people say stuff though, because I'm, I'm reading it. They were saying stuff about Alex Jones. It was hilarious. There was <laughs> there some troll, some, some trolling going on, but uh, all right, I'll, I'll chat with you soon. Just, just hit me up and let me know that event. I'll check it out. Not a problem. We'll see you later. And thank you again for having me on. Appreciate it. No problem. Thank you. Have a good one. All right. So what do y'all think? I'm going to just, I'm going to just vibe out for a little bit. What, what do you guys think? So I had on Anthony Tremino, I believe, and then Diego, I don't know his last name for governor. What, what, what are the, what's the street saying? Let's see. I'll read some comments. Let's see what y'all are saying. It's okay. Open the schools now. You know, I got you, bro. You're good. Don't worry. What do y'all think? I'm going to put that on YouTube. Someone said, Bet Anomaly won't read this. Come on, bro. Get a profile picture, Country Dude 20. God bless you. I love the country. I love 20. You know, that's a good number. But you got you got the no profile picture. It's okay. I get it. Just just throw like a Rudolph or something. So I said that guy's what Cali needs. Uh, I like both of them, but leaving Tremino, love his personality. They both have good ideas. School is cold. Debate needs to happen. It would have been pretty funny to see a debate. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it happen. But hold on. Thank you, Vegas Patriot of uh, Spicy Street Combos. I appreciate y'all for the super chats. So I said I've gotten to meet Matt. Uh, he's really like his plans, policy, and humbleness, Camille. A lot of people like I know a Anthony a lot. Let's see, some people are feeling, I'm going to put this on YouTube. Someone said they talked a lot. Well, that's their time. I talk too much all the time. So am I an AMC? No. I'm going to bring on my man, Paul Gonzalez, for a few seconds. Paul, I, I, we'll, see what, we'll see what the streets think. All right, Paul. Paul. Yo. Yo, what's happening, Anomaly? How are you? What was your opinion? I know you're I'm... here for both. Who do you like better? What, what are you feeling? Um, I wasn't here for the whole Tremino, um, for his whole life. But um, he seemed kind of vague to me, to be honest with you. I I never really heard of Diego until the last few months. Um, I liked Diego's passion originally, um, but I really, honestly, uh, I I had DM'd you too. Um, I thought that Kevin Pathrat guy was pretty good. He's like the uh, YouTube dude. Okay. So. Oh um, right, right. Someone was just telling me about him. Yeah, the like. Oh no, no. Uh, it, actually, I what I I didn't see your message, but uh, this guy in my where where I'm at now, he was talking about him yesterday. He said yeah. he was like a financial dude on YouTube or something. Yeah, and he has like real detailed plans of what. See, I like I like when like you know these dudes talk about details because like Tremino to me, he kind of was real vague. I mean, I don't know how it started or how you got him on, or if he just like kind of went on, but. He just seemed kind of real vague with his answers. And I understand he has kind of a big following or whatever, but um, I was only, you know, me, I'm always just being skeptical with stuff. So I was just like, uh, I know he does business with big pharma and stuff like that. So just that kind of stuff is kind of questionable to me. I mean, obviously I know you got to do business with somebody, right? But um, Diego, I know he's he's like a smaller cat, right? So it's it's kind of hard for him to have the type of following that Tremino has, especially, you know, when it comes to finances and stuff like that. But I definitely liked uh, Diego's passion, although he did seem to get kind of like, I don't know if it was passion or anger when you, you asked him some question, he got a little bit like amped up. <laughs> no, he was definitely fiery. I mean, even like the second generation thing. I mean, I get when it's like, because listen, it's like, it's like if you're, 
you know, if you're black, they got like a dark skin, light skin kind of conversation, joke slash, yo, you're light skin, you're dark skin. So it's like, I'm first gen, you're sex gen, second gen. Like, I, it's definitely relatable, but for sure, I mean, you know, it is what it is. Some people are going to like it, some people aren't. I was laughing. I was trying not to laugh at your comment when you were like, bro, you're in a Bentley. You have a you have an iPhone charger. I don't yeah. know that it was a Bentley or not, but I was laughing my ass off. Just like when you kept saying you have a phone charger in there. He does, oh I, yeah, you know, I mean, and I wasn't, and, and I know it comes off as trolling, right? Because you only see my comments, but I'm just trying to be real, right? Like, I mean, if we were out in, it, it's like, I take this like there's 400 people out in public, right? It's like us. We're out in public. There's 400. He's speaking in front of what, 448 people or whatever. Like, come on, man. Like, I know you got a charger. You're driving a Bentley. I know I, you got a boat. I, I want to bring Carmen, my, my friend Carmen. Carmen, if you want to come in, because she said he's not, he doesn't work for Big Pharma. Maybe he ran an ad campaign or not. I don't know. But if you want to come in, I'll, I'll bring on two. If you want to, someone said he's not in the pharma business. Anybody that likes Tremino, feel free to come in and explain that because, uh, you know, I, I know people don't want to hear that. Feel free to send a request. Within the next minute, I'll let yeah, you come in so, too and kind of defend your, your side of the, so the reason, conversation. The reason why I say that is because I went on, like, his one of his websites and it shows, like, people who he's done business with. And a lot of them were, like, were medical phar pharmaceutical businesses. So that's that's why I say that. All right, here's Car here's Carmen. She's com she's coming in with the spicy street combo. So hey. let me, let me clear that up or let me know what you think. Yeah, oh. Anthony's in the advertising business. He has a global footprint. He has a, has a massive advertising agency that he's been doing doing advertising for 20 years, built from a 200-square-foot uh, little office in Downey and, and built it into an empire now in the Irvine Spectrum. And that also speaks to his ability to negotiate because the Irvine Spectrum has never allowed a non-retail business in a retail center in any of the Irvine company's retail centers. Never once have they ever allowed a non-retail business in one of the retail centers in the history of the Irvine company. So that says a lot about his negotiating skills. But um, that's neither here nor there. He does not work for Big Pharma. That is not true. He yeah. has a lot of healthcare companies that are his clients, but he has tons of different clients, not just healthcare companies. So, um, but what what he what he does have is because of his business is he has a really unique inside look into the way the healthcare works, and that's a big big deal for California, right? And for Californians, like our healthcare system and how it's broken and and why it costs so much and why it doesn't cover the things people want them to cover. So because he works with these people, he understands how they operate. But the other thing that, that Anthony didn't get a chance to mention because you know he just came off of a live video with, um, with Brandon Tatum right before he jumped on yours. So he was on there for over an hour and um, uh, who knows what kind of time he has in his, in his life right now because he had interview after interview today. But um, the other thing he didn't get to elaborate on was that fact that because he works with all of these companies all over the globe, a lot of these companies have a huge advertising budget for the state of California. So for example, some companies have, they, they spend $100 million a year just advertising in the state of California. These are companies that are based outside of California, but because California is so big and such a huge economy, they want California's eyes and ears and dollars, right? So his tax plan, which is genius, which nobody talks about ever, I've never heard anybody say this, is that he wants to instigate an advertising tax for companies that are not based in California, that want California dollars. If you want our California dollars, you're going to have to pay an advertising tax to get to, to our California eyes and ears, right? Okay. So, and, and, and by the way, real sorry, not to cut you off, but uh, no, it's okay. Flapjack, he, I didn't kick him out. He just disappeared. So, bro, if you want to hop back in and, and have like a little discussion, you can. I just don't know where he went. Maybe his phone died or something. He, he was making fun of Tremino for the phone die. And maybe his phone died. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, keep That's, going. Ironic. That's, That's ironic. That's ironic. But the, the genius thing about Anthony is that because he works with all these major corporations, he understands how to negotiate. He understands what they need. He understands what they'll spend. So he says, you know, they spend $18 billion a year on advertising in California. These are companies that don't exist in California. And so if he just taxed that, or I'm sorry, he could, I'm sorry, he could make $18 billion a year on 
California, non-California companies that advertise inside California, if he only added 10%, a 10% advertising tax, if he did a 20% advertising tax, he could make $36 billion a year for the state of California. And with that plan, he can eliminate our state income tax, which saves the little guys and the middle men, you know, the, the middle class, a lot of money and a I lot have, of dollars, you know? I have so, a question. I, I, uh, I don't know if you're willing, but there's this kid, uh, his name is open the schools now. I think he's like 16 or 17, but he loved Diego. I would love to bring him in and hear y'all he, talk for like five minutes. I mean, you can bring him in. Like I am, I'm old enough to be his mother. So we have this policy that we don't go live with children. <laughs> he's 16 okay. years old, but yeah, no, I, I, it's, it would be, I, I don't want to like, do anything weird but i know he was all diego diego, diego. He, he goes live with diego about every day so he and oh, diego okay. are like it seems like they're like best buddies they go live pretty much every day together okay. you know they talk like every day and he's like diego 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 i think he's diego's like number one fan which is fine you know um is it bad? can we not have him in for two minutes or no you could, I don't bring, know. You could bring him in i mean right, he, we'll he gets a little nice. feisty you'll we'll both be nice okay that, yeah that anomaly is gonna come through and, and make sure nobody fights but <laughs> <laughs> no, it's so funny. Uh, all, right, all right, we'll get you get. I'll give you like less than five minutes, but Max, I'll bring you in, and then uh, hopefully, let's see what happens. All right, listen, let's keep it. Let's keep it kosher. Hey, yep. how you doing? How you doing? All right, so what? I guess yeah. What's what's going on? Well, you know, I heard this. No, so I wasn't trying to paint you in a bad way or anything. I just saw a few people in the comments like harassing him, so I was like. Um, like I had a feeling that people just didn't want to have him on. I wasn't yeah, talking dude, about I know you. you get, Sorry you're about like the You get hyped up sometimes. You guys just start throwing. I do, through, I do. So I fire. know you guys were talking about uh, Kevin Pafrath. I guess, uh, I, I mean, people are saying he has real solutions, which, you know, he kind of does. But he's like, he, he's kind of admitted that he's more like of a leftist kind of guy. So when it came to Tremino, what I was concerned about was the big pharma, right? And obviously Diego hasn't really accepted money from um, lobbying firms or anything like that or any real big corporation. So I think because of that, people have a feeling that he can't, you know, win. But really, when you think about it, it's a grassroots movement. So the idea is not that, you know, we'll have a lot of money, but we'll have a lot of support, right? People okay, ask. Let me, get, let me get, let me get like a Carmen. Let me get a little. Yeah, Carmen. go ahead, Carmen. Yeah, see what she's got to say. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, Anthony Tremino is not taking special interest money either. He does not work with Big Pharma. He's not a Big Pharma advocate. In fact, he's probably going to lose some customers here. I mean, Anthony is the type of guy kind of like Trump. He has literally no reason to run for office. It's not going to yeah. gain him one penny or one piece of support. In fact, he has everything to lose. He's got an empire. He could easily go to Florida, live a life of luxury happily with no stress, low taxes, a a mansion whatever he wants to do right? right but this is his home and he wants to fight for his home and god keeps calling him back here god keeps saying you're not going to run from california you're going to run for california and so he's like are you kidding me you're cho yeah. you're choosing I, me for this right you know i want to say this, I, I I say this real quick back in the comments yeah. like you were saying he's taking money money like i i have to be honest like i'm i'm not a mm -hmm. sellout i i sell my own hats like, <laughs> no, not. so it's like but in general, it, the reality of it is, even someone like myself, who's pretty frugal in some senses, you do need money to run a campaign. So it's like, yeah, at the end yeah, of the day, you got to win. So you can say, you know, he has no money. He's, it's just going to be people. But at a certain point, you know, they're, at least having some money to get your name out there is not is not the end of the world. You know, and I like that. You know, I like that fighting spirit, too, which is like, you know, we need to stay here, right? It seems like uh like we're campaigning against each other right like the republican side you know or of this recall all the other candidates they're campaigning against each other instead of campaigning against gavin newsom and i think that that's one of the bigger problems and i think that that's why the republicans could be um divided right now you know um i think it's important that we unite and we say we need to get against this governor look people have asked about his abortion stances right He's like, you know, I'm pro-life, I'm pro-adoption. He actually adopted his daughter. And um, basically what he, what he thinks is, you know, he's going to enforce the law. So it's, you're legally allowed to have a first trimester abortion, and he's going to enforce that. But he's like, I'm not going to enforce anything else unless the voters decide to change that on the ballot, you know? Right. So I think that, you know, when we interviewed him on our on our uh, Cali race for governor page, yeah. there were a couple of questions that we asked him. That we And we love his passion and he has great answers to a lot of things. There were a couple of questions that were, were fuzzy and that was one of them was the pro-life question. Are you pro-life? 
And he was like, well, I am, but I'm going to enforce the law. And, and you you know, see, from our standpoint, he, um, as the governor, you should also be encouraging people to, you know, change things that you don't like. So if he truly doesn't like that law, right. he shouldn't just say, I'm going to abide by the law because your job is really to kind of guide your state into where it needs to be, not you just abide by, hold on, not just abide by whatever mm -hmm. laws are on the books because a lot of laws are not right. You know what I mean? But There's a I lot of laws on the books that are not okay and that probably need adjusting or change. So for somebody to just, his answer keeps on being, I'm going to abide by the law, but as the governor, you know, you want to guide your state into the right direction and some laws are unjust, some laws need changed. So he's gonna need to be able to encourage that and inspire some change in his state, you know what I and mean? And can I be real honest with you? That's the only dispute I had with him when I first met him. I thought all of his policies, all of his other policies were really good. The only dispute I had with him is I'm really pro-life because less than 1% of abortions are because of rape, right? And you know, I, I have a personal belief that no one has the right to take that life, right? And of course, the Supreme Court and Roe v. Wade ruled that, you know, obviously abortion is legal, but um, we know we know that it's immoral, you know, like you can't really justify killing or, or taking away a life. Right. And that's the only argument I had with him. Other than that, I saw his immigration policies. I saw his policies to, uh, you know, finish the water project and things like that as good things for the state of California. Yeah, I mean, we like I said, we loved his passion. He had a lot of great answers you know, for, for me and for our team, a lot of our team, we just felt like Anthony had it all. Like it, it, there's literally not one box that Anthony doesn't check. So because of that, and also when you meet him, you, you feel how genuine this man is. You feel how convicted he is and you feel like truth and you feel just so much light and conviction coming out of him. Like every single person that meets him, even people that I've fought with like can you just meet him no i'm not going to meet him can you just meet him no i'm not meeting him he doesn't have blah 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 blah, blah right yeah and then they go meet yeah. him and they're like oh my god carmen like well, where know, did this man come from like this i am getting behind him 110 percent. and so I, when I you would, meet him it's just it's undeniable how, how, how you feel yes, uh, I, I, real quick i i like i like the whole dynamic i just winged this whole thing i was just getting tea jesse called me he was like get my guy on uh, yeah, it's funny having you guys have a conversation. It's not funny. You guys are both well spoken, and, and I like you both. But it's like I didn't even plan to have two people who like two candidates have a debate after having two. Well, candidates. it's a healthy <laughs> settlement, you know. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. let's get them. Let's get them to have a conversation. You I know, want uh, maybe one other person in there. If they're both me personally, too, I saw problems with the educational system, and so does everybody else. California ranks ranks as one of the lowest states in terms of standardized testing. Right? I tested out of school. I just graduated not that long ago. I'm only 16. I'm done with high school already. So uh, I thought I, I found a way out of high school. You know, there are solutions you can test out. There are ways to get out. But we need to teach our students to respect our teachers. And his whole idea is, you know, all that stuff starts within the home. Like, you know, I was talking about him or, or with him about pornography. And he's like, that starts within the home. Right. Because we know that that impacts the sex trafficking industry and that funds all that funnels money to it. So I had an important discussion with him on that. And I think it's good to ask our candidates challenging questions, because if we can ask them challenging questions, we know and, and if they can answer them, you know, in, in the most transparent way possible, they're most likely capable for the job. All right, Carmen, any last words? I'm, uh, we're going to keep the rolling. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I have Max. to say, I have to say, Max, you know, I do appreciate very much that you are such a young guy and yet so passionate about politics and making a change. Like, I do appreciate that. I see a little bit of spice, even more spiciness than I have in you. Yeah. I'm pretty spicy, <laughs> but, um, and I used to be very spicy, like extremely. And, you know, and then I learned how to just like, okay, you know, cur curb it and whatever. Are you? Well, I'm, I'm Puerto Rican. Saying. I'm Puerto oh, Rican. That explains, I'm part Puerto Rican. My Puerto yeah, I'm Ecuadorian. Grandma, I'm yes, so. yeah. 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 Yes. yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not very much. I'm a quarter Puerto Rican, but out of everything that I am, I'm most Puerto Rican. I, I identify mostly with Puerto Rican. <laughs> um, but you know, I appreciate you, Max. Stuff. You know, for being yeah, such you. a young guy who's passionate. I think that you could tone down some of the jabs a little bit when you're commenting. Um, but you know, that's, that's your style. <laughs> I'm that's your style. I was your style on YouTube and talked about it. My video got taken down immediately because I, I like gave a rundown on the ingredients that are in the jab and everything. And bam, they took my video down. So 
I'm just having yeah. fun with you. I'm just having fun with you. But I know, I know. No, I've been I banned think she off meant like a boxing yet. jab, right? You were talking about a boxing jab, like the. Jab. Oh, okay, a different. No, yeah, yeah, my so bad. Like, yeah. I got jab. He's like, you go taking door to jabs door at me. Yeah, to okay, I got jabs. you. I'm just playing. But yeah, then no, now I'm just talking about the other jab. No, no, you're. But you're. I think you're on the a, a great track. I totally appreciate your passion for 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 me and for many of us um, that are out there doing doing the leg work as well at the rallies, busting our buns, meeting right. everybody. Like for us. We have, when somebody checks every single box and boxes that I never even thought about before, I, it's just undeniable. And, and you, know, you know, when people meet Anthony, it's, it's just undeniable how much conviction that he has for this state and for, for everything that he's been through, rags to riches, like complete rags. I mean, this man, I mean, Diego, Diego kind of took a jab at, at Anthony when he said, you know, I, he doesn't know what it's like to struggle and whatever. That's not true at all. I'll get them both on. Listen, it's, it's easy yeah. to be talking online sometimes. You know, you know Max be creeping in the comments saying, but we're going to get, <laughs> gonna get them on. I'm, I'm going to have the debate and discussion. We're going to make it. It would be great. It would be My great. My absolute final comment has nothing to do with Diego or Tremino. It's really that too many people have decided to vote by party lines. Like, we're so busy checking the D or the R box, right? Figure out who your candidates are. It's important to have civil discourse because we haven't had it in a while, right? And now people are getting censored in the name of hate speech. We see that in China. We see the communism. We see the fascism. We see that leaking in and pouring into American society. Oh, Winnie the Pooh's offensive to the yellow race. So we're going to cancel him. <laughs> right? Winnie I the Pooh it. is offensive to all bears. He's offensive to all honey eaters and all fat honey eaters for that for that, I love know, it. I love it. Max, you're going to do great things. You're going to do great things. And since you brought up China, you know that I went to Hong Kong to fight against communist China, right? Oh, well, Hong so, Kong used to be owned by England, right? English territory. Yeah. yeah. I went to Hong Kong to fight against communist China. I documented the whole thing was was tear gas. It was gnarly. It was amazing. But I agree with you. I'm not about communism. Um, and it's sad what's happening over there. And we need to prevent that from happening here. And that's our whole right. Point. So yeah. Appreciate yeah, family, appreciate you so Thank much. You. Yeah, appreciate you so much. We love coming on. We'll, we'll chat soon. All yeah. right, chat soon. Bye bye. God bless I'm you. I'm gonna roll off in a little bit, but uh, I'm gonna bring on Pastor Brian real quick. I don't know if you saw the debates, but get an opinion, see what's see what's going on with him. And uh, I've chatted with him before. He's a cool guy. Hold on, I gotta, I got, I, I'm clicking buttons. Hold on, I gotta. There we go. Let's see. Last one, and then I, I'm gonna roll out. That was fun. I'll probably save it. I'll put it on. Uh, I'll put it on my YouTube channel and my Facebook. Probably that was. Interesting stuff, and then we'll keep it moving. Yo, hey, what's going on? How are you? Did you catch uh, both candidates, or did you come towards the end? I did. I caught both of them. I, I saw both candidates. Um, so yeah. So what did you, what did you want to know? What What are my thoughts of both? Yeah. Of what them? are your thoughts? What are your yeah? And and are what are are you running? You're running for a different seat, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. No. I, well, I'm already elected, so I'm a, I'm I'm a councilman where I'm at right now. And, and, and then you're center. running for Congress, right? And I'm running for Congress. Yeah. I'm okay, Riverside so, County. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you're not is, in this race. So you're allowed. No. To no. Run. No. 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 I'm 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 watching. I'm not gonna say I'm watching from the stands because I I am out in the streets. Uh, I do agree with what Max was saying earlier, and this is one of the things because. The first question on the ballot is, do you feel like um, Newsom should be recalled? And that's the biggest problem because I do. I'm a delegate. So I get, you know, Faulkner, Cox, they've all grabbed the delegate list. And so I get mail every day from Faulkner talking about Cox. Cox talking about Faulkner. Like, that's a crazy last name, too. That's, that's really weird. But neither one of them has mentioned anything about Newsom. Like, nothing at all. Like, nothing about his failed policies. You know, um, just just nothing like and, and, and the sad thing about it is unless you're on social media or watching a lot of these social media accounts, you know, few people even really know why Newsom should be recalled. And that's the biggest problem right now that's going on. Um, you know, we got everybody's excited about their candidates and rightfully so. Um, you know, I have had a chance to follow uh, Tremino. I have watched um, Diego Martinez, Anthony Tremino, because I don't want to make it seem like I'm not mentioning both their names, but I did follow Anthony Tremino's. Uh, I was going to go to his launch, but it was just on Juneteenth, and it was just a lot of things going on that day that I was spending with my family. Plus, I just got back from North Carolina. I was out there for two weeks, so I didn't get a chance to go. So I do want to go and meet with him. Uh, I, uh, I would like to, you know, sit and talk with Diego Martinez. I do like their passion. Like, at the end of the day, there are there are a lot of horses in the race. Um you know, for a lot of people know that I'm a big supporter, a big fan of uh, Major Williams. You know, I didn't get I didn't get on the attack train um, with his 
you know, spending and finances and everything. Because as a, as a politician, I do understand how campaign finances go. So I don't dive myself into it. My day is going to come when people's not going to like me one day. I'm going to say something that's going to offend somebody. And next, you know, all out attack. I'm ready for it, though. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a different breed of candidate. I don't I don't go into hiding for nobody. I would uh, say that with major, like people were like, he bought an expensive hotel room. I'm like, shit, if I'm running, I'm not staying at a Motel 6. So, so, you know, like I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not above it, but I, I, it's like uh, staying at a nice hotel room. Like that's, to me, that's that's a non-story. So if, if there's well, something crazy here, but you know, that yeah. was one of the things I heard and I was like, that's to me, that's not crazy because I stay at nice hotels too. I, I pay for them. I'm not a politician, but yeah, I'm not, I don't, I don't think you have to stay at like a bunk hotel if you're running, but I don't know. So it's not about staying at a hotel and this is how I look at it from my perspective, right? It's all about what type of person you're going to be when you get in the office. So if you're, if you're running on a conservative platform, you got to think about that. Like you're, I can see if you were left, you know, left like to spend money, like, you know, whatever. Well, so does the right, too. So I'm not going to just make it seem like it's just a left or right. But at the end of the day, your, 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 your platform is conservative. I'm a Republican. So you want to show that, hey, I'm, you know, small government. I'm not for wasteful spending. And so those things are, you know, like, for instance, when I went to North Carolina, I could have bought tickets for everybody on my, you know, that's a part of my campaign. But no. We drove to North Carolina. I, I wasn't about to sit up here and spend, you know, you know, donors' money, um, even though it was a campaign trip, even though I raised a lot of money out there because I grew up in North Carolina. I want to show the type of person I'm going to be before I get in the office. You know, I'm not going to run wasteful. And, and it's not like I said, this is not to speak towards the decision that he made because I did go to that event that was in question and, and I saw the outcome of it, too. And that's another that's a whole nother part. So I do understand as far as, you know, spending money and and everything of that nature. Um, I'm just trying to be smart with what I'm trying to do once I get there. So the, that way, when I get elected, people say, OK, you know what? I voted for him based on how he ran his campaign. Everybody said they're going to reach across the aisle. Few people at, have. Go ahead. At that debate, the one I had, uh, like. Who, who, I know maybe you like a major or someone else better, but uh, who, who reached you more? Who, who, who did you feel like if you were to choose, if you had to choose between those two, like who, who hit you more and who was like, not nah, you weren't feeling as much? I'm just curious. Um, so they both brought two different levels, two different elements, right? Um, obviously, Tremino is more of a business polished individual. So when you're thinking about governor, you're thinking about, um, you know, negotiation. I mean, this is the fifth largest economy in the world, not the country, but the world. So you definitely want a business minded individual. At the same time, too, Anthony, I mean, Anthony Tremino, uh, Diego brought like that, you know, blue collar that, and, and it's not to say that Tremino doesn't have it because, you know, I know that he's overcame, you know, just because you dress well or speak well and you have that business acumen. Um, so I just think that they both bring a different element to the table. Uh, as far as, you know, the approach, I did hear a little bit more of substance when it came to, not to his credit, as uh, Cam um, Carmen was saying about him coming off of another interview, uh, Diego did have more of a substance to, um, you know, different bills that are being presented, you know, as far as, you know, knowing more about uh, what's on the table that Newsom has overlooked. So he does know a little bit more about the policy. That he explained. Now, like I said, you know, the conversation didn't really go there with Tremino. Uh, I know that he's spoken about policies and different things in other interviews. But if I were to just go off of this particular interview right now, like for anybody else, and that's the whole thing. And that's a good thing that Carmen came on. But if I'm going off of right now today, you know, like I said, they both brought two different uh, types. So uh, I'm under the impression that California would be in good shape in either hands. Uh, you can definitely hear to me. I mean, you can definitely hear Diego, like somebody said, his passion and everything about, uh, you know, speaking and stuff like that. I did love the fact that when he came on, he did have a lot of hecklers, a lot of trolls, you know, but then I started to see the crowd shift. So that showed, you know, level of people like, okay, wait a minute, you know, give this guy a chance. And he started to win, you know, I started to see people more of, you know, in favor of, of him, you know, you know, so I thought that that showed a lot of guts uh, to most people wouldn't get in that fight. He did come back on uh, him having Max, you know, a champion like that 16 year old kid, which is something that Camille spoke to. You know, he does take his time to speak to Max 
a lot, which says a lot about his character. You know, he don't have to give Max the time of day, but I, I, I admire that too. Um, you know, but like I said, they both just bring something unique uh, to the table. Both of them are better than what we have right now. I just think that if, if we're really going to win in September, we got to start getting out and bringing awareness to the actual campaign itself against Newsom. You know, I everybody's. Think I think it's a calculated answer, respectful answer. But yeah, I mean, if, if 51 or 50 percent of people vote against him, then it's it, he's gone, and then it comes down to the vote. Any anything last, real quick? I'm gonna take off because I'm gonna. I can't keep it short because it's been probably over an hour. But I'm gonna put this probably on my Facebook, YouTube. I'll keep this on Instagram for probably an hour and 30 minutes, but it's going to go to my Facebook and YouTube page, my Telegram page real quick for everyone. It's Dream Rare Chat. The same as Dream Rare. Just add chat to the end. That's my Telegram page. You'll see it there tomorrow. So I will put this whole conversation on, on social media, but it's probably not Instagram. I keep my Instagram pretty clean. Yes, sir. Well, I do want to say this. For those who are in California, you know, get involved. You know, go to your local precincts. If you're in Riverside, reach out. You know, we are looking for grassroots individuals. As you heard, Diego's not raising a lot of money. Some of these other, you know, there's there's a lot of people out there. And it's not about, you know, if you if you don't even have anybody that you're supporting right now, support California. Get out there and raise the awareness, you know, download and get some flyers. Make some flyers yourself. Bring up some of the information. Start sharing these broadcasts because we got to raise the awareness. You know, get involved, you know. Don't bring the energy and then leave it off after, you know, September 14th. You know, we need a constant flow of grassroots, getting individuals involved. I heard, and I agree, I, I agree with Diego said about the Republican Party, man. It needs to be restructured, revamped. There's some strong wolves out there. You know, there's some young individuals, you know, kick. And, you know, there's, there's so many out there that, you know, given a chance, we can really take over the Republican Party and do some damage, you know, for California, really save California. That's where it's going to come. So, you know, if you're aggressive, you're a wolf, you're hungry, I'm a 24-7 person. We got to get out in the streets. Thank you, Anomaly. I appreciate what you're doing, man, for giving these individuals platform, even like myself. I appreciate this opportunity. And, you know, let's win this state together. No problem. God bless you. We'll chat soon. Take care. God bless you, too. All right. Thank you guys for joining. Hopefully you have fun. That was a wild stream. We had a lot going on, people arguing, debating. I see the comments. A lot of people are passionate about both sides. That's cool. Uh, me, myself, you know, I'm letting things flow out. I've talked to a lot of candidates, four or five now, so I'm going to keep doing that, broadcasting, debating, conversing, getting people's opinions. Pretty cool stuff. Slapjack, what happened? Your phone died? You were talking about his phone dying. I think maybe your did your phone die or something, or you just got kicked out. But uh, <laughs> I didn't want you to leave. But anyway, it worked out. <laughs> Everything was cool. Sorry, I got the got the Delta, the Delta variant. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I got to get that Lambda bearing out of it. I'm just kidding. But anyway, appreciate y'all. Have a good day. And uh, follow me on YouTube or, or Facebook. I'll probably put this up yesterday. It's a long convo, but I think it deserves a home somewhere. So it was cool. It was fun. Uh, you already know. That's what it is. Thank you, guys. Thank you to everybody with the little badges and stuff. That makes it extra, extra worth it. It's always fun. I'm out. Uh, I'm exhausted. I already streamed for two hours before this, and I did a podcast for an hour. Uh, it's easier than doing other jobs I've had, but I'm, I'm pretty tired. Have a good one, guys. Uh, I'm out.